Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're here to film my July budget video and this video and this budget is going to be very different than in the past because if you guys have checked out some of my recent videos you know that I am officially doing YouTube and my Etsy shop full time now which means that I no longer have my salary and things are just going to look a little different. So um, I wanted to just really quickly touch on one little thing and it's honestly going to be a very small part of this video because I feel like I just have to at least address it. So there has been some current events with Erin Condren and I think everybody can pretty much agree that what she did as a person um, was wrong. I think everybody knows that. But um, I saw a quote and I've been thinking about this like nonstop since everything came out and I saw someone post something that said, if I only bought from people who were perfect, then please let me know where Jesus sells stickers. And I thought that was the perfect example of what I felt was the right thing to do, which is to continue to use the planners that I've spent money on, that I have put time and energy into to start setting up. And I know that for some people, that is going to be exactly what they do. And for other people, they are completely switching up their planner system. And every situation is completely different. Every person can do it differently. And I respect everybody's decision in, you know, in that aspect. I just wanted to say again, I plan to continue using them. Going forward, I don't know what what I'm going to be including in my channel and even next year when my planners are done what planners I will use. Um, I don't know honestly. I think that's just going to happen with time. But I wanted to just quickly say my stickers, my budget stickers, they fit any 7x9 or 8.5x11 planner. So if you are one of those people who want to switch they will most likely fit if you're getting a 7 by 9 or 8.5 by 11 planner. There may be a few things like the monthly view that may need some tweaking. Like if you guys see here, I have my monthly view. This might need to be tweaked. So if you are using my budget stickers and you decided to switch to a different planner, reach out to me on Etsy. Let me know what you're using. I could definitely try and come up with something if you don't want to like just try and make it work the way that it's formatted. Um, so that's that's honestly all I'm going to touch on because I feel like it's a very personal thing. Everybody has to figure out what they personally want to do. And like I said, um, with the fact that like I have these planners and I begin setting them up, I'm just gonna continue to use them. But there's no right or wrong way, in my opinion. Do what is best for you. So with that being said, I'm going to continue to set up my budget planner. I already started setting stuff up as you can see for July. And so I thought I would quickly just kind of walk through what my plan is for July. And you'll see all of these budget videos up this week. So I don't have anything planned for this page right here. This is honestly the page like right before July. So I may not use these just because it would be nice to have everything like after the monthly page. Um, this is where I'll do my expense tracking. So that's pretty much the same as always. Um, here I'm going to be doing some other trackers and you guys will see that probably on Wednesday. So I already set up my July net worth. I'm going to do this every single month, but you could also do this using my net worth sticker kit, um, for like an entire year if you wanted to. On this side, I'm going to do some of, my, some of my financial goals, my credit score. I personally get my credit score from my like checking account and from our credit card. So I'm planning to just track those two places every month, like what my credit score is. Again, eventually we want to buy a different house. And so keeping that credit score as high as possible is a great thing for us with buying a new house. Then I'm going to have our budget here, our weekly check-in here our sinking funds. I'm probably going to have like sinking funds continued and then like start the transaction log maybe. Um, we do have like a full page of sinking funds and we honestly use like the transaction log pretty much the entire page as well. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do for July because I don't want to like leave a ton of extra space if I don't need it. Maybe I'll like, I don't know, we'll see. So anyway, that's kind of the plan there. Then I'm going to have a business budget and a spending tracker on these two pages. And that's again because I want to put together a budget for my business 
and just really manage my expenses now that this is my full time thing. Because in the past, when it was my side hustle, it was really easy because honestly I had two incomes coming in. If I wanted to like buy a cute sign for my like office, that was not like a big deal. But now it's a big deal. So anyway, um, I just put together a like budget of what I think I'll en end up spending. Um, my business budget will now include like our health insurance. It'll include a bunch of other things. Um, so that will be there. And then I want to do a spending tracker, which I'm hoping to also add to my Etsy shop at some point when I figure that all out, where I can just keep track of all of my transactions. I do have two extra and actually almost three extra pages. So depending on how my sinking funds go, um, I may leave like an extra page just for my transaction log. But for right now, we're just gonna go ahead and worry about the budget. So uh, this is where I'm gonna do my budget. And I personally really like using stickers. Everything that you guys see here is from my Etsy shop. Um, and I do have August stickers out. So if that's something that you wanna pick up, um, I do have a link down below for that. This is the Erin Condren Monthly Planner. It's new. They used to call it the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner. So um, I, I love that this planner has so many pages. In the past, I think there was only like five pages maybe. And so you're really limited to what you wanted to track. And now there's just so much more room for activities as, as stepbrothers would say. So again, our budget is so different right now just because of the fact that like now I'm self-employed. I got a lot of questions questions in that video um, about whether Jason's going back to work and we've talked about this a little bit because now like I won't be working at nights um, which is what I used to do in the past like I would be working full-time for my job and then I would also um, try and do like all of my Etsy stuff and YouTube at night whenever I had a chance when the girls were like you know in bed or whatever and now that Jason is, now that I am like doing this full time, Jason technically could go back to work at ACE or doing something else, but because of everything going on with like the virus and stuff, we figure it doesn't make a ton of sense to like expose us more than we need to. So for right now, he's not going back to work. Honestly, Etsy and YouTube is like seriously a full time thing for, re for me right now. At some point it may be less work, but right now it is a lot of work. And so he um, will maintain his his job as a stay-at-home dad taking care of the girls. And I will continue to do like Etsy and everything like that. So again, for my income, we have only one source of income now, which is my Sarah Marie stuff. So I'm just gonna put in Sarah Marie. I used to call this variable income, but I'm just gonna do Sarah Marie. And then I always like to leave a space for miscellaneous because you never know things come up. Um, you may get like a refund for something. You may get a stimulus check. Like you just never know. So it's always nice to have that there. And then of course, I don't estimate anything for miscellaneous. I don't anticipate anything coming in, but we're gonna kind of do it that way. And then in terms of expenses, I like to break mine out into fixed and variable. Um, that's just honestly how it's worked best, especially with the limited amount of space in the seven by nine planners. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those in right now. We'll do variable over here and then fixed on the opposite side. Okay, so in terms of variable expenses, our expenses haven't changed very much um, from our previous budget, so that's not, there's not really much any, there's not much of things to like really point out. Anything that would have changed, like now having to buy health insurance and stuff like that, I'm running through my business budget because those are things that like now, instead of my employer covering, now I am gonna be covering. So first we have electric for our house. We have gas for our house. We also have cable and internet. I always just put cable. We have groceries for our family and we do have a family of four. We also have our eating out. 
We have gas for our cars. We have a household section in our budget for like toilet paper and stuff like that. We also have a haircut section and Jason actually finally was able to get a haircut this month and it was so nice. I still have not got, gotten my eyebrows done, but that's just because the place that I go to is in the mall, so it's kind of hard to get there. Um, then we have I, my eyelashes. I have been going for a long time now and honestly, I can't imagine life without them. Jason and I both do get an allowance, so I'm gonna put that in as well. Then we have our sinking funds. And then I like to put an unbudgeted section. We don't put anything in unbudgeted. I just feel like we would take advantage of it if we did. Like we would be like, oh, we can go out to eat an extra time or something. So I personally don't, but I know a lot of people choose to do like a miscellaneous or stuff like that. and and they're okay with that. I just personally don't think that we would handle that well, so we don't. Okay, so that is all of those um, variable expenses. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my lines and we can fill in the amounts. Okay. So for electric, I'm gonna give us $80. This might actually be too low, especially because of how hot it's been, but we're just gonna do 80 for now. Gas for our house, we're gonna do 50. It seems like it's been on the lower side, so we're gonna go with 50. Cable and internet, we're gonna do 170. We've, honestly, I feel like our cable is not on a set schedule anymore. Um, before it was like predictably like the same amount and now it's not really so I need to look into that and possibly like maybe getting rid of cable and just going to like apps and stuff. I know a lot of people have reached out saying that they have ways that you can watch sports channels and stuff like that. So I do need, I need to research that but honestly like my main concern right now is like figuring out all of my benefits because that's something that I have to do by June 30th. Like that's when my old benefits end. So that's kind of my main concern at this point. Groceries, I'm going to do 500. And me and Jason are gonna try and be better about like growing every single Sunday, like meal planning and doing all of that because now with me being home, things are starting to settle down a little bit. Mila has been sleeping in a crib now instead of the snoo and we just have been getting better into a rhythm. So I'm really hoping that we can make this a priority and, and get through it. Eating out, we're gonna do 200. We are probably one of the only people who have like continued to eat out. Honestly, it's kind of like a fun thing, like something different for us because we're at home all day. There's a couple restaurants around us that we can actually walk to that have outdoor seating. So we've done that a couple times, but I feel like it's just kind of like a fun thing to look forward to, especially when there's not a ton that you have to look forward to. For gas for our cars, we're gonna do $100. We're not really driving anywhere. We drive to Jason's parents' house. We drive to like forest preserves to go hiking and um, to the grocery store, obviously. But for the most part, like I'm not going into work. Jason doesn't go into work. Like we really don't have that, that many expenses in terms of gas. For household, I'm gonna give us 125. This number used to be $100 but I've kind of realized that over time we needed a little bit more. I know we're gonna have to stock up on like toilet paper. I really wanna get like paper plates and stuff like that so that when people come over, we don't have to worry about like whether the dishes are like in or out of the dishwasher. So I wanna do that. Haircuts, we always give, um, we always have $40, which is $20 for Jason's haircut um, and then $20 for my eyebrows. For eyelashes, I will be going twice in July, the beginning of July and then the end of July, so that will be $60 each time. For allowance, we're gonna do $100 per person, which is gonna be $200. I think going forward, I'm just gonna do a straight to like $100 per person per month. I feel like it's just kind of annoying having to count the number of Fridays. Jason doesn't work anymore. Um, so in the past, what I would do is like, part of Jason's income from his part-time job would go towards our allowance, we would get $20 per week. Now that he's not working part-time, it doesn't make a ton of sense to do it that way. So again, I think I'm just gonna make it consistent and be $100 per week, or not per week, per month, and just do it that way. 
sinking funds. I actually haven't even went through and closed our sinking funds for June. So I need to do that, but um, I'm not, sh I haven't been sharing that number as it is because I did have tax numbers in there. And I think going forward, I'm going to do that separate. I think that I'm gonna include that as part of my business budget. That way I don't have to worry about like my sinking funds, like not showing certain things. So I will have to fill that in later. But in terms of unbudgeted, we're gonna do zero for that. And then for fi fixed expenses, we don't have a ton of fixed expenses. So we have our mortgage, we have our car, we have Netflix, we have Amazon Prime, and we have little poppy bows. And those are all of our fixed expenses. We really honestly don't have very many. So we're gonna go ahead and put this little total guy here. And I always struggle with where to line this up, but I think it'll be okay. It won't noticeably be different. I am losing my words today. Okay, so we can fill all of this in. So our mortgage amount is actually lower now. Um, we did, when we bought our house, I think we put like 15% down or something. Um, we wanted to make sure we had like enough in reserve just in case, because again, back then I was, I was the only one working when we bought our house, I think. So anyway, it went down because we we're finally done with our PMI insurance, which is really nice. And I did make a video talking about us paying off some of our house. And for the most part, I feel like people understood what I was saying and why we were doing it and everything. There were some people who didn't get it and that's completely okay. I think everybody's perspective with everything is so different. But um, going forward, we do plan to kind of continue what I was talking about. So let me just fill in the rest of these because I feel like I'm gonna mess up if I keep talking while I'm filling in numbers. And then Little Poppies is 33.22. Okay, so I talked about it in that video that we were going to be paying down some of our house. And honestly, a little bit of backstory. We have been saving for a new house for a long time. We had no idea when we would actually be buying a new house. We had an idea, but no like set plans. And so um, we've just been like holding on to this money. Um, honestly, I think part of us thought that we would end up buying a new house pretty shortly after we had Mila. And then after we had her, we realized how absolutely crazy that would be to buy a brand new house when we just had a little baby. So anyway, we've been kind of just holding on to it for a long time. And one of the days recently, I've been looking at our mortgage statement and just, you know, seeing all of the details behind it. And I realized how much we were paying in interest. And I know like with every mortgage, a lot of what you're paying is more is interest, especially like the beginning of your loan. We've only had our house for like, I think almost four years. So it hasn't been that long. So of course we're paying a ton towards interest. But me and Jason got talking and I'm like, you know, I wonder if like we paid off some of our house, if the interest would be less, like would we be saving more money per month, whatever. So we did some research and honestly every month doing that, like putting a big chunk towards our mortgage would mean that we would be adding to principal by, principal by like two to $300. And for us, like, I mean, it's better than getting a couple cents every month for having that money in our, our savings account. So um, a lot of people were like concerned, like, oh, you know, it'd be better to have that money in savings. And we do still have a fully funded emergency fund. We would never, ever, ever like put money towards our house that like without having some type of like large emergency fund. So that was not my intention with that was that we were going to be putting that money towards our house. But I do plan to do a couple other videos talking about our emergency fund, what we decided to like stick with because for a long time it was $20,000 and honestly like now it's just we realize that that's way too low. So I'm going to do some more videos about all of that but regardless now going forward, and you'll see this when I go over our um, financial goals over here, I think going forward what we're going to do is anything that we save, anything that we save 
with our budget. So like you guys see this, you see that I have like our income up here, we have our fixed and variable expenses, and then there's a spot for total potential savings, total actual savings. I think what I'm gonna do going forward is after the month closes, we know what our income was, we knew what our expenses are, we see if like what if we saved anything, that money is going to go straight into our mortgage, like an extra mortgage payment. Because again, we do have a fully funded emergency fund, we have a pretty substantial buffer in our checking account, and so we just want to like put extra money towards it because again, it'll save us money with interest. Um, whatever money we end up putting into the house, it's not like we're not gonna get that back because I think a lot of people are confused about this point, which is that when you sell your house, unless it's unless you're getting a huge, huge gain on the house, which would never happen with our house, um, you don't pay taxes on what you like get from your house. I think for a married couple, it's like $250,000 or something that you don't have to pay gains on. Don't quote me because again, those, I'm pretty sure when I was studying for the exams last year, that's what it was. I'm pretty sure it was like 250. Anyway, um, so basically the way that it works when you sell your house, and I'm sure a lot of people know this, but when you sell your house, you're going to have like whatever you sell it for and you subtract what you have, um, what your loan is, like what you owe on your loan. So regardless if our if our house sells for really low or really high we still owe what we owe so it doesn't matter if we put more towards it or we don't if we sell our house for less than what it's worth and we have a larger loan than what we get we're gonna owe money we're gonna have to give the bank money so I feel like sometimes people get confused about that and that's kind of the reasoning behind why we decided to just put the money in it we're hoping that we are able to sell our house for more than what we paid or what more than what our loan is but again we have the flexibility that we could stay in this house for as long as we need to like if the market crashes we could stay here longer if we needed to so that's kind of our plan but basically I, I just guess I wanted to say that like going forward one of our financial goals is to put extra money towards our mortgage um, we haven't really done that in the past that's kind of a more recent thing that we've been kind of talking about and thinking about and so that's what we're planning to do going forward so anyway that is my July budget definitely keep an eye out for my sinking funds for July and then some of my other miscellaneous trackers I think tomorrow's video on Tuesday will be the sinking funds video and then on Wednesday will be like where I set up the rest of it. So like my weekly check-in, I'll probably set up parts of my budget um, for my business and stuff like that. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, but that is pretty much it. Let me know if you guys have already set up July budget. I always like to do it a little bit early just so I feel prepared, but I know some people do it like later on. Um, so let me know, have you guys set up your July budget? Are, do you have any new financial goals in July? I feel like because it's a new planner, like I feel like it's a kind of a new slate, but I know a lot of people feel that way about January, not really July. So anyway, let me know what you guys are thinking and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.